As Michael just made mention of that of China, very important for the whole region, just not our own market. James, one of the things that has been holding back the Shanghai Composite is the fact that they have been tightening and raising interest rates. And these comments today suggest that perhaps that tightening cycle is coming to an end. We did see Premier Wen come out to say that the uh, inflation, in, uh, inflation in China uh, has been reined in, successfully reined in. And that was a huge positive for both the Shanghai as well as the Hang Seng market. We've seen the Shanghai Composite rising a massive 2.6% and the Australian market up afternoon rally is also on the back of that. Not only that, though, those comments also feeding into metal prices. We've seen copper prices jumping by 1.2%. Base metal prices mostly higher. Oil and gold prices also gaining in the Asian trade. So altogether, our market finishing on a positive note up by 0.2% and really getting a boost from those comments out of China today. Julia, in terms of the, the, you mentioned the Shanghai comps it up over 2% on the back of those comments and so forth. Technically, is it getting to a, a pretty interesting point? It is at a very important level. If we have a look at the Shanghai Composite, it has been correcting since April. In fact, China's stock market is down by 15% from the high that we saw in April. And the key here is to break that downtrend line. We have a look at the Shanghai Composite. This is a chart over the last 52 weeks. And you can see this downward trend that we've seen uh, since the peak that we've seen in August. And we're right at that downward trend at the moment. If we do see a clean break of 2,700 points, which has been a crucial mark for the the Shanghai Composite over the last couple of years, it would signal that the correction is over. So the next couple of sessions in China are going to be important. If we see a break of that 2,700 point mark, it's going to be an important mark uh, for the Shanghai Composite, really signaling that that downtrend is over. Also, some more positive co comments coming out of China. I think Tank in China today saying that China does not want to see a default in terms of the Greece situation. So it does look like China is also working with the IMF as well as other countries which are involved. So that's a positive development in terms of the Euro European sovereign debt crisis as well. But coming to Australia, we do take a strong lead from the Shanghai Composite and the Chinese market. So if we have a look at the Australian market is technically we're at an important point as well. We know our downtrend has been in uh, place since April as well, and we've seen the Australian market correcting by 10.5% over the last 10 weeks. We need to break that uptrend line as well, so that's at about 4,580 points. And if we are downtrend line, if we manage to break 4,580 points, that would signal that the pain in Australia would be over. A, a target on their back after what's been, you know, this, this big sell down? Well, a key driver of the Australian share market this week has been takeover speculation and takeover offers coming through. In fact, if you have a look at the top uh, performing companies on the ASX 200, Foster's and Paladin in the top three this week. We have a look at Foster's up by 12% this week on the back of that bid coming through from SAB Miller. And if we have a look at Paladin shares, that stock up by about 6%. Remember, Paladin has dropped about 50% uh, after the Japanese nuclear crisis. So uh, it is looking cheap at these levels and a lot of speculation going on in terms of Paladin. So all over uh, the week, if we have a look at the market, we have seen a gain for the week and that's been a positive. But staples, consumer staples, has been the best performing sector and that's really because of that takeover bid coming through from Foster's. On the flip side, Telstra's had a terrible week and that's made telecom the worst performing sector with a loss of more than 4%. It's looking very cheap at these levels and altogether, if we have a look at Telstra, I guess a lot of the concern coming around the capital expenditure that it has to have. We know that large projects in Australia have seen cost blowouts, especially in the resource sector. We've heard from Woodside Petroleum, we've heard from BHP Billiton today. And Telstra will be responsible for uh, delivering those pits and duck ducks in a usable uh, fashion. So that's going to include about $2 billion worth of capex, which has been budgeted. But of course, we know with big projects that that could quite easily blow, blow out. So a little bit of concern. Most brokers, though, still remaining very positive on Telstra. I noticed UBS has a $4 target, retaining the buy rating. Goldman Sachs has some concerns, but it's kept the stock unrated because it's advising uh, Telstra on some things at the moment. But altogether, Telstra's share price has broken through a key technical level. $2.99 was a key ceiling for the market for nine months. We finally managed to break above that, but it's failed to rally to $3.20. It's back under that $2.99 mark. So technically, it is looking uh, quite vulnerable. Last thousand dollars in your pocket, you've got an option. Rio Tinto or BHP Billiton to invest in. Who do you go with? 
I'd go with the BHP Billiton in terms of oil and gas in the long run and potash is looking like a very attractive area. Prices are already up 25% in the year to date so far, trading up at about 500 US a tonne. And if you have a look at potash and what it's used for, potassium is used in fertilizer and it's used to increase yields as well as uh, some of the disease resistance in uh, plants. And if you have a look at China, one of the key concerns is our uh, food. And I guess strategically food is very important, but not only that we are seeing a movement as uh, the middle class grows to meat and meat requires a lot more in terms of uh, feeding the cattle and this is where potash I guess is going to see a lot of demand come through from China as well as from India so if we have a look at this investment it is a drop in the ocean 488 million US dollars which takes the investment in this potash project to 1.2 billion dollars this project will cost about 12 billion dollars first production is not due to 2013 and it's not going to be until about 2022 uh, until we see a ramp up up to the level that they're expecting which is about 8 million tons per year so I think potash is a very attractive area we know that BHP Billiton is one of the best diggers of dirt in the world and that's really where its skills comes into it with potash so developing this project but 488 million dollars is only going to help uh, prepare the ground for the project 1.2 billion dollars in the initial stage and this project's going to cost about 12 billion dollars